Hello, and welcome back to another episode of 2W Conversations, the podcast where eavesdropping on us is actually encouraged. Today is a very special episode as we have our first outside guest, Bill Curran, Senior Director of Information Technology at PNY. Hello, thank you for having me. Thanks for being on. Bill has been an integral part of the 2W and PNY partnership for seven years now. So this is a great opportunity and I'm super excited to hear about their journey to cloud excellence from his perspective. So let's start at the beginning. Let's go back to how you found us. So an interesting story had how we found 2W Tech. We had E9 on-prem and we were looking to uh, upgrade to E10. And it was a long, arduous process because of the amount of code we had in legacy progress. And then we spec'd out some pricing for on-prem servers. And at that point, we were probably 10% in the cloud. And when I say 10%, it's the standard um, Microsoft email, Teams, SharePoint, and ADP Workforce Now, which is a HRIS system. So not a lot of experience in the cloud. And everyone's talking about the cloud. So we're like, all right, let's let's look at a cloud first approach and see where we can go from there. Because we'd rather have the ability and swiftness and the, the elasticity of bringing things up and, you know, right sizing them as needed. So reached out to Creative. We were we were too large for them. Reached out to Epicor and they basically said at the end of the result, we're too complicated. So then I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking what to do. So I just type in Google, Azure and Epicor, and up came 2W Tech. I'm like, hmm, who are these guys? <laughs> so did a little searching on the screen, uh, on, on the website, should I say, and uh, reached out to Mark. And Mark had Tom on the phone, and then we just started chatting. We shared what our goal was to upgrade E9 to E10, and then um, potentially get it off off site because it still wasn't a done deal. Um, my druthers would be to get it off site, and through discussion with Mark, through discussion with Tom, we kind of walked through a plan of how we would do this and the configuration and. You know, all those nitty gritty things that we needed to do. And we were both, com- you know, it's like a relationship. So we had to be comfortable with 2W Tech and um, they, they needed to know what we were doing. Now, on the good side, we have a pretty big IT staff. So we're self-sufficient in the Epicor world. Where we're not self-sufficient is Epicor and E10 because of the different architecture. And then also no real experience with Azure. So bit the bullet, jumped in, migrated over, and things were good. So E10 is up and running. It wasn't easy, but um, we're up and running. So we continue to work with 2W Tech on getting this, the environment stabilized. And that was just the beginning, right? There was a lot more that came after that? Well, our domain controllers were on-prem. The way Azure works, better to um, have a, your domain controllers also in the cloud, so they're synchronizing. So little by little, we were prompted and directed to things that could help our environment and make it more streamlined and more um, fail-proof. You know, it was just a natural progression. We started doing the um, domain controls, and we had our backup was on site. We had an appliance here, which is a data domain. And I don't know if I'm getting too detailed, Not but at we all. had it... Backup device on prem and a backup device in San Jose. So then, in talking with um, Tom, we we rearchitected that, got a newer do- data domain, and then migrated all our on prem backups to to a virtual um, data domain, and then that was backed up. So, how did those conversations go in terms of adding additional technologies or features or whatever it may be? Tom would come to us and say. All right, this is your environment. Basically, you you can utilize the, these things, and these are things that potentially can help your business and 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 streamline it and make it more resilient. As we were going through the years, you know, one year turned into two years, and Tom would come to the table with new offerings, uh, a new SKU on Azure that will make it cheaper. It usually it's cheaper and faster. So, and the time to do that is for a server, it's like probably 10 minutes to do some servers. Um, Database is a lot longer, maybe four hours, but 
it's very doable. It's completely different, a completely paradigm shift from having hardware on-prem and needing to add memory and needing to, you know, you're, all of a sudden your hardware is end of life and what do you do? And so there's a whole different way of thinking. And, and with the partnership with 2W Tech, we were uh, learning as we went along. You know, Microsoft is changing ever so fast as well. So there was a little bit of learning on the, the 2W tech side as well, but things change. So we both took advantage of that. And I would be on a lot of calls with Tom, just hour long calls, just me asking questions. Or I got an email from somebody and they're saying that um, this service is available from Microsoft. One, what is the service? Two, what does it do? Do we have it? And, you know, we would put together a roadmap to to get PNY from where we were to where we currently are. And where would you say that you're at now in terms of how much of your business is in the cloud? I would think at this point in time, we are about 90% in the cloud. Oh, wow, that's great. And the only thing on-prem is the, the file shares mm-hmm. and domain controllers and our, our Epicor dev environment. Okay. So we have additional hardware. We have additional uh, data, data warehouses. We have um, a, a a partner portal that we've created and other things. And and growing with two W Tech, we would come to them and say, "Hey, we need something. Um, we really don't know what it is. I want to create this WordPress portal." And 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 together we we created and you know filled out our offerings to the to the company from a PMI perspective. And what version of Epicor are you on? We are currently on um, what I call E11, not kinetic. E11 is E10 upgraded with a fat client and also the classic screens. Mm -hmm. In April, we upgraded April 20th. We've successfully migrated. uh, 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 We didn't migrate. We we usually take the existing environment, leave it, and create a brand new one. Take the database, bring it over here, upgrade it, work out the kinks. And then, you know, the day we went live, we moved our DNS to point to this, the new environment, shut down the old environment, and we're up. I'm greatly um, underestimating the, what we had to do, but th- that at a 50,000 foot view is what we did. Sometimes we were getting involved in Power BI and and our expertise was at a certain point, but we needed a more in-depth view. So we started going for different things. And, and Linux, we stood up a Linux box for people, and Linux isn't in our bellywick, so to speak, but um, it was in 2W Tech, so it was a partnership, and is a partnership. When we need things, we um, discuss it with them, but um, the thing that is important to me from a customer perspective is, one, knowing that your provider understands what they're talking about, understands and is capable of coming to the table, not only with solutions for now, but for solutions for a longer term. Yeah. And longer term might be, um, you know, we, we started moving away from uh, E10 database server and we moved away from a, a virtual box to a SQL Server managed instance because that's the way the world is going. That's the way Microsoft is going. So those are the types of things that um, in working with 2W Tech as we're laying out the the new architecture for E11, we discuss those things. We put the, the blueprint down and we discuss the pros and cons of it. And then together we make a decision which way to go. So what's important to me is that the, the company has knowledge. The company is um, is there when you need them at all hours of the night. Very r- rarely do we need it lately at, at certain hours. But if we do, we can get in, in touch with somebody. And the biggest thing is from a, a CIO or a uh, person who's in charge of IT is you want to eliminate noise. You want to eliminate issues in, in your environment. So the less issues you have, more things are stable and running. You have a lot more leeway to do what you need to do as opposed to run around and do firefighting. A hundred percent. And that's one of the taglines we use constantly, right? We are always pushing that. Let us handle your IT. Let us handle your migration processes. Let us do it so you can focus on what really matters. But what are some of the other benefits that you've seen through this migration process? So we have 
the uh, ABDs where our um, E10, the the application laid was was we don't push it down to the, the PCs. So um, the flexibility to, to change immediately to to um, the redundancy, the backups, the um, DR, it, it's it's kind of like all wrapped up, and there's so much flexibility and things that can easily change that um, I can't even imagine going back to having something on prem at this point. Yeah. So it gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of reduces risk. That means not having your server crash, not having the you, you can't go to your backups. You have, you know, the more uh, solid solution you have, especially in the cloud especially where you have the with Azure, you have the regions and, and you know, Tom and, and Jason and the group have kind of laid out the architecture where everything lays and how things are backed up. Um, it just gives you so much flexibility. Cloud is a huge improvement over what other people have. People get scared or confused that, um, you know, when you have things in the cloud that you might lose control but with with the relationship that we have and the relationship i'm assuming that you have with your customers they they maintain that control Mm -hmm. and the other thing is as prices kind of go down and you you can start to look at things that might be able to nicely go up to the cloud for much cheaper another thing is the uh backups or on-prem backups we had to buy we needed to upgrade our data domain, and that's a backup appliance. And instead of doing uh, one, another one at another location or physical in, the, in Azure, we opted for a virtual. So save money quicker. It's backed up. It's offloaded to a different region as well, some from redundancy perspective. So that's another avenue that we really re- reached out and, and partnered with 2W Tech to um, implement the Microsoft suite of tools. You had some things already implemented, though. We just helped you add new security features. So we had the basic um, advanced threat protection for email. We had the uh, antivirus and defender. But we implemented endpoint protection. We implemented, that's almost like a whole nother practice within a, a group, a company. Yeah. We w- worked very heavily with and continue to work heavily with 2W Tech on a security. We actually meet weekly to uh, to make sure that we're in the right spot, constantly moving forward to keep PNY's security profile uh, more hardened. Well, we're glad to hear you're keeping our team nice and busy. So I want to challenge you now to think of other impacts that you see outside of the tech side. I know being the senior director of information technology, you always think about the technology advantages. But from a business side, what impacts have you seen keeping up with your upgrades in the Epicor environment itself, but also now being cloud first? So that's an interesting story because I came from a world of J.D. Edwards, which is Oracle. And back in 2006... We had a web-based application. Unfortunately, Epicor, um, in prior years, we migrated to the the, the newer version. But um, unfortunately, they Epicor spent a lot of time working on the back end, and not a lot to the front end in the early days, E9 to E10. Yeah. So there are a lot of um, updates that. Like we had to get onto the kinetic because we were in sustaining mode and, and it just had been like two and a half years. So now that we're on there and we're stable, we're now we're going to start going through a, a process of what what's new, what can we leverage, you know, because there's a lot of new things in the system. So I can tell you that the benefits of the system from E9 to E10 to, to current, it's faster, stable, and we can scalable. Absolutely scalable. When E9, we used to have issues running invoices. We could only run like 12 invoices an hour, some crazy stuff. And we had to set up a separate server with it. It was just horrible. We don't deal with that anymore. We It just scales and it's fantastic. We don't we don't have to worry about cogs rip running, continuing to run or... Um, MRP not running properly, that stuff runs, runs quickly and gets us out of firefighting mode into how we can improve things. 
Like we just did an exercise at PNY. They want to implement AI throughout the company. And when you talk to anybody, a vendor, or you talk to consultants, first thing they ask is not AI, it's not the technology. It's what's the, what process do you want to improve? How can it help the business? What we did, I had to go talk with all the VPs and get like the top five wish list for um, improvements. And a lot of it was cost related for um, logistics or shipping, forecasting. But some of it was utilizing the system more. What are you currently using? Then what's new in the system? And then can we leverage anything to make the, the system better? It should be a constant loop of upgrades and then what's new and available to, to use. Yeah, for sure. And that's one of the big benefits of having a technology provider like us because we are more up to date with all the things that are coming out in the softwares and the different technologies and we're there to swift through it and bring it to our clients and say this is what's going to work in your business this is what's going to help you and it becomes a lot of noise if you aren't in the tech industry and you're trying to tackle that and juggle that on top of everything else in your business right um well awesome bill thank you so much for hopping on we appreciate it uh let us know if you liked hearing about Bill's success and if you want more of these because we are going to start pulling clients in from all of our different solution sets so if there's a certain one you want to hear let us know thanks 